Hello everyone and welcome back to Deploy a Website Lessons and Code Academy. So it's been quite a long time since last time we did this but oh well. Uh, last time when we were looking at the Deploy Website Lessons and Code Academy we looked at uh, deploying a static website using Jekyll. And today we're going to be uh, making a an account on GitHub and then looking at what we can do with that. So if you haven't watched the previous videos, then I would recommend doing that so that you get the hang of what we're actually doing. And also uh, having the knowledge of HTML and CSS could come in handy. But let's get started. So there are many ways to develop, deploy a website to the public internet. In this unit, we'll use the GitHub pages to deploy your website. So again, the main objective of this uh, lesson or not this lesson this deploy a website course is not to create our website but it's to deploy it or get it out there unknown basically so github is going to help us do this github pages is a service offered by github of course um, specifically github pages are public web pages that are hosted on published and published through github so why GitHub pages? In the last unit, we generated a site using Jekyll. Now, uh, Jekyll was basically like a layout of our website, which was quite easy to use and looked quite nice, even though it was simple. GitHub pages offers extensive integration and support for Jekyll. By using both, you benefit from easy setup, troubleshooting your site, and updating your main maintain and maintaining your website. Sorry. Note, remember it is possible to follow all of the steps outlined in this course with your own content. So if you already have a web page that you've created and you like it more than what we have created together, then you can do that as well. Just make sure that your HTML is inside a file called index.html as GitHub pages require that, requires this. So our instructions for now are to successfully deploy your site, you will need a GitHub account. So I am going to do this off camera so that you guys don't see any information, hopefully. But after I do all of this, I will be back. So let's just see what we need to do. We need to navigate to github.com, create an account. If we already have a GitHub account, just uh, continue to the next exercise. After signing up, be sure to verify your email address. The content to the right is a video. You can play the video if you'd like to view a demonstration of the instructions. We'll come across more videos like this throughout the rest of the course. So I will come back once I am finished with this. Be right back. So now that we have the website, let's move on. In order to publish your site using GitHub pages, you'll need to create a repository or repo on GitHub. So how you do that? Once basically you get into your account on GitHub, you can just go start a project and that gives you onto this screen and that's fine this is all we need for now um, so in github repository is a github repository is online so central storage place where you can store files and all versions of those files we use the repo you create to store the contents of your website your repo's name must allow must also follow github pages naming convention otherwise your site will not publish at all so in my case i made it so that it looks like this basically uh, it has to follow this convention your username followed by github.io in the example above you would replace your username with your actual github username which in my case is michael dash kakam and then instructions. Again, in your own browser, create a new repo in your GitHub account and name it according to the GitHub pages naming convention as in the example above. Note for this course, do not initialize your repo with a readme. If you do, you may run into errors later on in the course. So let's actually show you that. If you do start project, do not tick this box. And here you can put whatever you want. I am just going to access mine. And also, as you saw, how to access your old repos, you just click here and you can access them. So let's move on. Also, before I move on from here, make sure not to press I want to restart this exercise because otherwise 
you will have to redo the whole of the course, and it's not that fun. Um, so now that we got that out of the way, let's get started. But, well, let's continue. Great, now that you've created a repo with the proper naming convention, let's upload your site to GitHub. We'll use the git to push or upload the contents of your site's directory to your new repo. To do this, we'll first initialize a git repository in your site's directory. So our instructions, or how we can do this, is by following the instructions, which are the following. Sure. In the terminal to the right, open a new tab. We already have a tab, but if you accidentally close it, just press the plus there and you should have a new tab. Then let's just see where we are. We need to cd to personal website. Uh, this was just an accidental one that we created, or that I created at least, I'm not sure about you guys. Now that we are in personal website, just to confirm we can do pwd. Uh, now that you're inside of your site's directory, initialize the git repository with the following command. So git init or initialize. Good. We have initialized an empty git repository. Moving on. Next, git needs to know what repo will store your site's content. So in this case, the repo will be the one you created on GitHub earlier. To specify the repo using git, we'll have to add the remote and label it as the origin. So what are the remote and the origin? The remote is the URL of the repo that will store your site's content. So basically this in the way. And the origin is an alias for the remote so that you don't have to type it, this out all of the time. You can just call it like keyword or origin. Uh, you can think of an alias as an abbre abbreviation or a substitute name or a nickname or a variable name, I guess, maybe even. This means that instead of having to always type the lengthy remote URL over and over again, you can simply refer to it as the origin later on. Or the, in a way, the homepage in just a weird way. So in the terminal, you can add the remote with the following command. All of that stuff. Uh, in the example above, HTTPS blah 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 is the remote URL. So this is the remote URL. No, no, it's uh, the whole thing is the remote URL. So from HTTPS to the end. Uh, again, you would replace your username with your actual GitHub username. But in my case, because I haven't done my us my username here as well, I'm going to replace it with DAW. So it depends on what you wanted. I am going to use DAW instead. And yeah, which I uh, got from deploy a website, DAW. So make sure that your uh, URL is typed correctly, otherwise you risk a failed deploy. And if you don't type it out correctly the first time, you can just use git remote rm origin, and that's a safe command to use. Compared to this, or this. You can use this, I would do recommend using that if you run into problems. So in the terminal, add the remote that points to the repository you created earlier. Use the example above to help you. So git remote add origin https slash slash github hub there we go dot com slash michael dash kakam slash now I have uh I think that this is where DAW comes in. Just in case I'm going to capitalize that dot github dot io dot git let's just make sure that that is the one d a d a w i o git d a w hmm, there's a github in there i'm not sure whether this is outdated but i'm pretty sure that there's not supposed to be github there so d a w dot io dot git is the one i am going to use seeing as that's the one that it looks like I should be using. So, okay. Um, let's just make sure. So, that's my username followed by the place. So, username followed by the place. Good. I'm pretty sure that that is going to be correct. Now, if I press enter, it's fine. Confirm that the remote was successfully added by typing the following git remote minus v. I'm pretty sure that means that's fine. So, oh yeah, 
get so origin is done good we're almost there git also needs to know exactly which files should be pushed to your repo so in this case we want to push all of your site's content to the repo this means we will do the following two things in order add all of your site's content to the git staging area and commit or save in simpler terms your changes so how we add everything Currently we have this folder that we're in, or directory more accurately, over here, it contains all of these things, and it also contains all of these things. And we need these to so that our website works. So how we add those to the website, we do git add dot. The dot just means add everything that's from this directory. So the dot means is referring to this directory basically. Save your changes using git's commit command and the following commit message. So git commit minus m save my work. Uh, good, that seems to have worked this time. Now let's move on. It's time to deploy your site. Once again we'll use git to help deploy your site. This time we'll use git's push command and push the contents of your site up to your repo using the following command. So git push minus u origin master. So as you remember origin is just the alias for uh, this whole thing. And master we will see. So in the terminal push the contents of your site to your repo. So we can do it straight away. Git push push minus u origin master. And we're going to be asked for our username. So wait until the terminal stops outputting information. So basically, after you've run that code, wait until the ter yep. Uh, note you will be prompted prompted to enter your GitHub credentials before you can push, which are the username and password. So as you input the password, as with anything in command prompt, I think command prompt. I'm definitely sure about uh, command line or kernel or whatever you want to call it in Linux, uh, it's going to be hidden, so it's not going to be visible, even though it is actually taking in the input. So this is how all terminals work as an added security measure. So be aware that although password is, the password is not visible, the terminal is still accepting your input. Simply hit enter on the keyboard once you are done typing the invisible password. If you typed it incorrectly, simply try again. So let's do that. And that looks to be done. So if you are having problems because you have double or two-factor authentication, authentication, follow that link. And if you are having problems even after that, do post in the comments. I will try to help the best I can. Because I'm not using two-factor authentic authentication. I can't even pronounce that, sorry. Authentication, there we go. Uh, all of this shows up and it looks to be good. Fantastic! You now have your site published on the public internet. You can now navigate to your newly published website in your preferred browser. So the URL of your GitHub page is this. Well, it should be that. I am not sure. Let's just view it. Some, if I can. Um, so where your username is your actual GitHub username. So let's just see. I don't think it's going to be there. Uh, no, but I think it's going to be DAW instead. Or not. Uh, let's just let's literally try, try this. There we go. So basically just copy and paste this and you will get to where you want to be. And looks, that looks correct. If we go into index.html, this is the code that we have written. And we don't have to view it right now, so I'm not going to worry about that. Let's review what you have accomplished in this unit, in this video, in this lesson, whatever you want to call it. Uh, created, so we have created a GitHub account, that's quite a big thing, I believe. Created the required GitHub re repo or repositionary. Used Git to add, commit or save and push your website or upload your website to the repo. And successfully used GitHub pages to deploy your site to the internet. Note that your site's URL matches your repo's name, a GitHub pages requirement, but what if you want to change the URL to a custom URL? So in the next 
unit, you'll learn how to keep your site hosted on GitHub, but change the URL to something besides the GitHub page's default. So something besides all of that. Instructions, take a look at the diagram to the right. In this unit, you successfully accomplished the second step. This step, so here. We accomplished this step last time. Currently, the URL to your site is the GitHub page's default URL. The next unit will move to the third step, assigning a custom URL to your site. So, we are done with that unit. If you guys have any questions, do feel free to ask in the comments down below. I am open to answer them and will do that as soon as possible now that my exams are finished. I have more freedom. So, yeah. Other than that, if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe. It encourages me to make more videos. And until next time, keep watching. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.